the past 30 years. Um, and now when I have to go out for essential shopping, the grocery folks are like, your husband mentioned he was married, we've never met you. Uh, so the community knows I'm, I'm here, I'm not a fiction, uh, my friends at least can uh, find me and um, I am so appreciative of the simple joy of a cup of coffee in my own home with the husband that I, I still like after 30 years and he's, uh, he's pretty happy too. So I didn't expect that to be such an awakening and I'm really happy to be off the road for a while. That is fantastic. And I bet not only is your husband delighted to have you at home, he's delighted that all those people finally believe him when he says he has a wife. They're like, oh yeah, where is she, in Canada? Yeah. On vacation, right, remember? <laughs> uh... Fantastic. Well, last question before we open up the Q&A, I get to get my last question in. And my question is actually stolen from our mutual friend, Peter Sims, an amazing, amazing guy, runs an organization called The Black Sheep which is all about people who are misfits, artists, creatives, and corporate misfits who are looking to change the world. And Peter always asks people the same question, which is, what are you excited about right now? So what are you excited about right now? Let's go out on a positive note. I'm excited about putting people first, leveraging technology, the creativity of Silicon Valley to change the employee employer value proposition for good forevermore. I think we have a unique opportunity and I don't want to let it go. Awesome. Eva? You know, Chris, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that um, when everything is at risk, you understand how important um, being human and health. And so um, a lot of things we used to worry about relative to do, can I keep this team healthy? Can I give them the support if someone does get ill? Uh, can I give them flexibility so their family can stay together? Um, it's uh, put our profession into an importance level that's been the greatest in my experience. And so I'm one of those folks like Pat that we are blessed with incredible business. But what I think is much more important is it's our chance to lead. And, um, you know, if there was ever a question about front row seat can make a huge difference and impact, I have never felt more called to action or prouder uh, of what we do um, in these kinds of collaborations. And I, I really do think the human side has gone to the most important thing and that's where it probably should have always been. Well, those are some inspiring yes. words. I love it to death. Uh, now I'm gonna turn it over to Nick and to the chat room and any place else that people want to ask their questions because I know that folks must have a few thoughts stored up. Now, a funny thing, back when I was in business school, uh, I was always designated as the question asker because when Warren Buffett or Michael Dell or Richard Branson would come to campus, people would be intimidated. They wouldn't want to ask that first question. So the organizers would always say, hey, Chris, can you ask a first question? Because once the first question goes out, everyone else jumps in. So who wants to ask that first question? Look at that. All right, we are going to answer this question live. Huge ups for Bruce Williams, who asks, when things pivot back to pre-COVID, i.e. no social distancing restrictions, what are the practices that you think we'll keep? I'm gonna keep the digital all hands, leveraging technology to put everyone in the front row and to continue to invite people into my virtual home to get to know my full family, my full me. So I, I think that's a gift. I'm gonna keep a lot of this because I can be in India in the morning and Japan at night. I can travel the world and still be with my family. Oh, that is awesome. Um, and I'm going to keep the, um, the idea of digital tools and skills um, in some ways when everybody's online, if you have um, good virtual uh, team building, everybody gets a voice. And I love some of the tools we're using instead of who's the loudest or um, you know, who's um, taking up extra airspace. Uh, we do a lot with all the technology tools from Menti to Mural. Um, and it's amazing how everyone gets heard. 
Uh, so I love that great uh, equalizer. Um, the other thing is um, let's get rid of FaceTime just for FaceTime. I think it's awesome for bonding, but this old idea of, I don't know if they're working if I don't see them uh, is gone forever. And I think we need to say goodbye to it. Well, it certainly is the case that if you haven't been able to see people for five months and the world is still turning on its axis, obviously the concept of FaceTime was always a crock. So I think we can safely put that one to bed. Oh, I was about to ask a follow-up question, but somebody came in with another question. All right, this is a question from Ellen who asked to build on the prior question, what do you absolutely want to bring back that we've had to pause on, e.g. travel, et cetera? So what do you want to, what, are, what is it that you're dying to bring back when they come out and they say, we got the vaccine, it works, everyone's going to get it. What's the thing you're going to be like, this is what we're going to do? Pat, you want to keep us going? Hey, I'm noodling. I'm noodling. I, I'll, I'll, I'll take it then. Yeah, you take um, it. I think there's a couple of things, but nothing I'm like focused on. So Eva, you go. Well, you know, I've been thinking a lot about all the people. I talked about those huge spikes um, in essential businesses, health services, people in brand new roles, doing brand new things. And 100% <clears throat> of their experience has been virtual. I've had new teammates join. I cannot wait for bonding and human connection to see them personally and physically, uh, to let them know how happy we are that they're here to meet their teammates. Um, you guys know I also did a tour through uh, Sun, um, those who remember the Sun uh, Microsystems days. And there is a real business piece, Chris. Um, we did virtuality in you know 2000. Um, and we found there was one team that suffered. Those that needed to be in the lab were really precise product development. We did have an experience where we tracked how many things could be fully virtual and um, that ability to pick up nuance, English as a second language and precision. And there are some of our jobs that you lose some of the quality and the content if you can't get people together. So that's my, my um, business brain. My private brain is I am saving up everything my family missed this year my sister's wedding, our 30th wedding anniversary, and my husband and daughter were born on the same day and had huge milestone birthdays uh, and my big Cornell reunion. And you know what? I want to do over. I don't care if it's a year, two years, or three years, and I want to party with the gratitude that those big anchor milestones meant and hug my sister and, and experience as close as I can to what her wedding would have been like if I could have been there and maybe it'll be her first or second anniversary. I was gonna say, she needs to have a giant first or second anniversary party. Oh. Uh, I think that's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, I went to, I did my business school reunion virtually, helped organize it and put it together. But this, when the school promised us that we were gonna do a blackjack reunion because I just attended my 20th reunion virtually and they committed that assuming medical science allows, we're gonna do 21. So here's to blackjack. I love it. Uh, so we've got another question. People just love this theme of these variations. This is from Karen Cornwell. Karen asks, so what have we stopped doing that we want to continue to not do? What BS have we thrown out that hopefully never crosses our door again? For me, I hope we don't go back into the wasteful tr business travel. I mean, making people fly, travel, the stress. I mean, you, I, I've seen so many of our own employees travel internationally for a few hour meeting and then come home. It, it's, it's a waste of, of money, but it's also strain on them, their family, like from a physical well-being, mental health. I, I think we can be more focused in our time, our travel, our intentionality. And the other thing is um, stop doing is the the way in which we navigate our time. I think we're way more intentional now in our time. We're getting better muscles. Uh, I, I, I don't wanna go backwards on that. I think we should keep that skill being built. Excellent. I mean, that, that is so well said. And I just um, I look at the carbon footprint impact. You know, a lot of us work in the whole picture of sustainability, human sustainability, um, the, the entire ESG measures. And, and I recently had the opportunity, I was so honored to interview uh, Sherry um, Archambault on an investor conference. 
And back to the idea of um, are there social innovations or patterns like Pat, you just talked about travel, where it's now socially acceptable to say, I will fly 36 hours for a two hour meeting. Um, you know, there's a big impact on lots of things to do that. And really was that a, a good use of the uh, assets that were important when you look at the full picture. So I think that's critical. The other thing is back to this no preconceived notion. I just looked this morning because I knew I was going to ask about the hunks and the chunks. 85% of people have shifted to some type of an online or digital workout with um, a lot of our normal gyms and other things closed. And, um, you know, uh, we're seeing just a huge spike in, well, I didn't know I could do uh, Pilates or bar at home and I'm not disciplined enough and a lot of folks apparently everyone on this call um, are uh, <laughs> are finding their way to um, their level of fitness um, you know I just bought the mirror I love it I am trying all new workout routines um, and like a lot of you who are listening I'll uh, sometimes have workout clothes on the bottom and a nice top on this and I'll run upstairs and I'll do like a 15 minute, um, you name it. I, you know, it could be a meditation to slow down uh, or it could be stretching. Um, I try to do the real high intensity stuff uh, before I get going, um, but it's super fun. And um, you know, I think uh, I don't want to ever go back. I, not that I didn't love my Pilates studio, but man, this is cool. And I get to see names of people all over the place with their avatars. And if I wanted to, I could put, be competitive and put my heart rate in. There's no way I'm doing that for a while. So. And, maybe, and maybe the reason we have so many hunks is precisely because of that lowering of the initialization energy, right? I mean, in the old days, they would say, oh, you want to go to the gym in the morning, lay out your gym clothes, put out your shoes. But you still had to put them on, get in the car, drive someplace. Now you turn on the mirror and all of a sudden you're going and you can do five you know five or six mini workouts during the day instead of having to have a giant two-hour block to go there work out shower come back so that's great stuff by the way i great that you mentioned shelly archambault amazing amazing woman uh, i should mention to the folks on the call that shelly has a book coming out called unapologetically ambitious uh, I can tell you, I read the early versions of it, gave her a few tips. Of course, if there's anything wrong with it, it's my fault. Uh, if there's anything good about it, it's her. But it's a phenomenal story about her life and how she grew up. And it's an incredible story that she should all pre-order, unapologetically ambitious. So it looks like we have another question from one of our question MVPs, Bruce. Bruce asks, any thoughts or ideas of how to coach or help team members that are overweight on the stress. Uh, I realize there are multiple options. I'm curious about others. So uh, people who are stressing out, I'm not sure whether it's because they're stressing out or they're stressing out and their chunks. Uh, I think it's mainly just the stressing out. So what do you do when you detect that someone is stressing out? We actually felt a lot of our employees were, were starting to stress too much and they would, um, you didn't know how to navigate, and if they were a manager, they didn't know how to help their team. And so we had a doctor come in for a hour, a virtual hour, and chat with our employees about the difference between natural stress, healthy stress, unhealthy stress, anxiety, and panic attacks, and kind of walk them through the neurological side of it, the physiological side of all these symptoms, and then uh, things that we can do and be empowered to do, to see a signal, to know, to step back, to meditate, to be thoughtful, both with your diet, with your exercise, with your intentionality of your scheduling, and then how to ask the question, especially if you're a manager, are you okay? How are you doing? Are you able to navigate the work-life stuff? How can I help? What would make your life more more reasonable for you at this stage? Because we're working, all working hard, but we're all facing different challenges and then adapt. I call it old school situational leadership, you know, bringing that back because we agree not one size fits every individual. Um, but that doctor was very helpful. And then with the social injustice, second pandemic, if you will, we realized that a lot of our therapists that we had on Lyra or the other services didn't have enough therapists that were of color that understood the strain that they were in and, and offering them guidance. And so we saw weaknesses in our own benefits and care. 
And so we modified those and we, and we held our partners accountable to providing more full care to meet the constituents and the communities where they are. So that also helped identify signal support and proactive care. I love the, um, the individualization and, um, you know, uh, this is where, again, I'm just so appreciative of um, technology. So uh, we did work with Thriving Minds and um, over 90,000 people at Accenture have taken advantage of that. The number, that number is about two weeks old. It could be now over 100,000. Um, and I, I dialed in, it's one of the most uh, utilized, it's a little bit of the equivalent of the mirror and they have modules you can take about source of stress um, but simple things like um, heart rate, breathing, breath walking, the, the idea that Pat was talking about of, um, you know, there's new stress, which is actually an excitement. You know, we have some athletes on the line here or in the video that, um, you know, you're geared up for, you know, this is a big, important team meeting or uh, client support, et cetera. And then the, you know, going all the way into that primitive mind that um, it just literally is spewing out cortisol. Um, and so folks have taken advantage of that. Um, the, the other piece we've seen is just um, where you are and making it okay. So uh, there's been a lot of work about this. Um, um, let's work through things on the racial justice uh, and social justice and, and uh, these serious, serious issues. Uh, we've been doing what we call safe calls and open sessions. And I was on one, um, right, oops, that was my watch going off. Um, <laughs> when um, uh, George Floyd uh, you know, was murdered, um, we had a call uh, and 125 people showed up. Um, and it was um, just safe zone, um, you know, what are you feeling? What are you experiencing? And it was people of all backgrounds. Uh, and then all of a sudden some really wonderful support and ideas came up, um, you know, a whole reading list. There were individuals on the call that are, uh, many of them not black, and they're like, how can I be part of something different, a different outcome? So a team collective reading list emerged, um, some, a uh, lot of problem solving, um, and it's become now, uh, it turned into um, uh, a product that we developed um, that uh, talks about um, all in against uh, racial injustice. And um, we've actually uh, developed a way for people to self-identify where they are on their awareness journey. And then you're guided to experiences that meet you where you are with no judgment. You may uh, be a person of color and have extremely high awareness. Um, and want to be working at the highest level. You may be someone who is uh, just not, doesn't know why it upsets people when folks say, you know, black lives matter and other folks say all lives matter and why they've got a strong reaction. Uh, so we might call that, you know, micro training. Um, the key though is where are people, how do you meet them where they're at and then can you give them any kind of tools to let them learn and grow and deal with this in a, a more uh, open, transparent way. Fantastic. Well, that takes us all the way up to 5 p.m. here in Silicon Valley. Uh, Pat, Eva, cannot thank you enough for participating in this, for really being real and human and showing off uh, all the different elements, both your knowledge, but also your own experiences. I think it's been very special and I want to thank the audience for being so engaged and having so many great questions. Uh, of course, many thanks to the good folks at Silicon Valley Forum, Nick and Denise, to Matt over at SVO who may have had to drop off, maybe to get a hike in, I don't know. But thank you so much. And I will turn things back over to Nick to wrap up. Actually, thank you. I just want to, my gosh, that was such an incredible conversation and there's so many great gems that I know personally I got from this conversation and certainly some definitive um, calls to action that I think all of us can um, implement. So um, just want to thank Eva. Thank you so much, Pat and Chris. You led a wonderful conversation. And to everyone who joined us today, you know, have a wonderful rest of your week and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Stay perfectly imperfect, everyone. That's right. <laughs> We had a blast. Thank you so much. Great to be connected. Okay. Always Thank great. You. Great job, Pat. Great job, Ava. Hey, you stuck around, Matt. You couldn't leave. <laughs> I did. I was, I was enamored with everything that was being said, so I didn't leave. Fantastic. Really, really good job. Thank you.
Take care, Thank everyone. Thank you for letting me indulge my hunk, chunk, and drunk. I hope that wasn't too uh, wild for you. <laughs> I loved it, but I was a little afraid to answer it. <laughs> Matt was in the room. <laughs> oh, come on. No judgment here. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you guys. Have a good Thank evening. You. Thank you. Bye-bye.